This is interviewer Kim Rivers. Today's April 20th, 2024. Do we have your permission to record this interview? Yes. What is your name, please? Juliet, with a T, Cohn, C-O-N-E, Schrader, S-H-R-A-D-E-R, is my married name. Where were you born, Julie? Where? In Tampa, Florida. Do you know which hospital? Tampa General Hospital. Mm -hmm. And where do you live now? I live in Gainesville, Gainesville, Florida. Uh, can you describe the neighborhood where you grew up? In what Tampa? Was... Yes, ma'am. Well, I was fortunate enough to um, Live. My parents lived two blocks from the famous Tampa Bay, and, and I enjoyed walking down to the shore and looking for the fish when I was little. Uh, what was your house like? It was just a, a, a small home. Uh, it was two story. The second story was a, a, a sleeping room. And I didn't live in a big house, but my father was a lawyer in Tampa. Yeah, the second floor was actually a sleeping porch that had windows, like all, you know, that's where they would sleep to get the breeze off the bay. Uh, did you ever notice an aroma from the bay coming into your area? Yes, very definitely. Later on, the city tried to take care of that. But uh, my little girlfriend and I went down and looked at the fish every day. We were just two blocks from Tampa Bay. Was the bay your grocery store? Or, you know, did you eat things from the bay? Well, if we did, we didn't know it. It wasn't very clean at that time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did you do for fun? Oh, my little friend, girlfriend and I, ran some, pricks, some tricks around the neighborhood, and uh, we played ball games, and we went to the movies. Our parents would drop us off at the local movies, and we just had a fun background growing up. What kind of tricks? Halloween, she's oh, thinking Oh, at Halloween, Halloween we, would, we would go out and dig up some uh, some of the Florida soil, and we get some little paper bags and tie them up, and I, I hesitate to say, but we would throw them on the neighbors' open front porches, and it wasn't too pleasant when they came and saw what had happened. <laughs> <laughs> what was school like? School was, was nice. We enjoyed school. Uh, we were... We made lots of friends in elementary school, some lifelong friends. And uh, I had pigtails at that time, and the little boys would love to pull on my tail, hit uh, pigtails because the desks were all stacked in a row, you know, like they used to be. That was a long time ago. But uh, we had we had a lot of fun. We took dancing lessons, and and. Uh, but most of our fun was centered around walking down to the Bay Shore and getting used to the Bay Shore. Loved it. Were there times that you can think of when the community would gather? Gasparilla. Well, Tampa had Gasparilla and the community all, some of the men were, were the, uh, Pirates on the pirate ship that came into Tampa Bay. We enjoyed that. Then they had a big event at night where they crowned the king and queen of Gasparilla. She was usually someone from the social set. What could the person expect to see and hear during that celebration? Well, they named a king and queen of Gasparilla. That was the main thing. And they had a court of Gasparilla. And I believe I was in that one time. And uh, 
we got, I remember we got to go on a yacht uh, and follow the Gasparilla boat. So it, it was a lot of fun growing up. So um, have you been to Tampa recently? You know, not recently. I talked to friends who have been to Tampa. I'm keeping up with Tampa, but uh, I don't have any relatives there anymore. I had relatives there, but I don't anymore. Mm -hmm. well, what got you to move to Gainesville? Well, actually, wasn't it my daughter? She moved to Gainesville. She's my only daughter. and. Uh, so I wanted to be near her, and so I moved to Gainesville, and I enjoyed it very much. Could you tell a little about your mama and your daddy, please? Well, my dad was an extrovert, and uh, when I was little, he introduced me to a lot of friends, and I heard a lot of adult nice conversations, so that helped me later on to be a reporter where I had to use a lot of words. <laughs> well, could you tell some more about that, please? Well, my dad was an outgoing person, uh, and so he took me with him to a lot of friends' houses in Tampa. And so I would just sit there quietly and absorb all the information I could. It was all very nice talk. Uh, where else did your father take you? Oh, we went everywhere together because I was very close to my father. I was indeed a cone. <laughs> and she was an only child, too, so. Not, yes, I was an only child. And in the summers? Hmm? In the summers when you would come up here? We would come in the summers to White Springs, though. That was our fun thing to do. And at Christmas, if my dad was born and reared in White Springs, and I grew to love him. What did y'all do when you came up here? Oh, we just went to the spring house. We walked down to the spring house, and I learned to uh, swim there when I was five years old. The old spring house, it's not in use anymore. That was our favorite thing to do. We were both good swimmers. Who else was there when you went swimming? Uh, well, I had some cousins that some, do you want their names? You know, I had a cousin who's, who lived there. And uh, then I had my aunt who was a postmistress of White Springs for many years. And we used to uh, walk down from the house in White Springs and get the mail. That was fun, my Aunt Lou Pritchard. What did your mama do most of the time? My mother was mainly a housewife. Mm -hmm. She was from Virginia, and she was more introverted than my father and myself. Was there a favorite dish that she would cook for you? Oh, all the food was good. <laughs> she wasn't a, you know, a born cook, but the food was good and healthy. Well, when you got a little older, what was dating like? Dating? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Let's see. I had a crush on a, on a boy that lived there when I was 12 years old, but I got out of that. He moved away. And, and later on, you're just talk, talking about my early years. We, we didn't date too much, you know, until I got out of high school. How'd that go? High school was nice. I went to Plant High School, and it was a very good thing. And I'll tell you one footnote. I was uh, editor of the school paper at Plant High School, and that was the beginning of my journalistic endeavors. So that was a lot of fun for me. And we did get an award for, for our high school paper in a newspaper contest. Well, where else did journalism take you on, on an adventure? Well, our, our high school newspaper got uh, an award uh, for one of the best newspapers uh, in the area, but I didn't get to go because my mother's arm was broken. I didn't go. 
but it was at Columbia University. What the award was. Mm -hmm. After that, hmm? you, you, what happened you with journalism what? later in your life? What was that again? Like after high school, journalism seemed like it inspired you to keep doing it. It what did. What all did you do? No, when I, I'll, I'll backtrack a little. When I was nine years old, I said I wanted to work on a newspaper. So it started early. So I progressed from there. Well, yeah, what, she, she had a class assignment when she was in fourth grade. What was your assignment, your first journalism assignment? Well, it wasn't really a journalism assignment, but my little friends and I in fourth grade wanted uh, a special comic, comic and papers to be continued and not taken out. And uh, so I wrote a letter to the editor of the Tampa Tribune. They asked me to do it, and I got a very nice letter back from the Tampa Tribune. And that got her excited about thinking she could change things by you know, writing. Well, I and then she got a degree in journalism and English later. Was was there ever any prejudice or racism that you saw when you were growing up? No, I really did. And especially here in White Springs, we had a cook who was just like a friend to us. So there was never any racism in my family. When you were growing up, what do you think the biggest challenge was to get to be a grown up? Well, I was shy until I entered college, so uh, that might have held me back a little bit, but I was always, since nine years old, and determined to, to be a journalist. Mm -hmm. What was your first job? My first job was with the Tampa Tribune. And uh, I didn't have any trouble getting on. So I enjoyed that. And my next job was family, uh, well, after I was married, I moved to Miami, Florida. And I, my second newspaper job was with the Miami News. So I've sort of grown up with newspapers. What was a day like as a newspaper re reporter? I mean, what was your day? What'd you do? Well, we just had certain beats that we covered, so to speak, and, and uh, I remember just loving it from the time I started. And uh, as I say, I, after I married, I moved to Miami and immediately got a job with Miami News. And that was my last newspaper job. Being a working woman, how did you uh, meet and marry a fella? Well, I married my, my most current deceased husband uh, on the job when I was working at a local uh, company. And uh, we, we just hit it off, uh-huh. So that's where I met my husband. It was in Tampa. Mm -hmm. Well, her, her first husband was, she, they met on a blind date. We don't need to discuss that. <laughs> what was your wedding day like? It was a small uh, home ceremony. No, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It was a big church uh, ceremony, but not a lot of people there mm -hmm. in Tampa. How did your husband feel about you being a working woman? Oh, he didn't mind at all, no. Can you think of a day that you might say was, a, was the best day of your life? What day could that be? One of the best was when I married, when, when I got married and then later my, my daughter right here, Rosalind was born. Those were memorable times. How did you decide on a name for her? Well, my husband helped decide that. Rosalind was a Shakespearean name, and somehow that, they gave her that, which I liked. Uh, did the military play any role in your life, being 
close to McDill like you were? Well, my husband fought in Korea, so that was, you know, during World War II, I guess it was, or whenever the Korean War was. No, later on. No, later on, I got my uh, thoughts wrong, but. What did he do in the military? Well, he never had to go overseas, but yes, he did. He did go overseas to Korea once. Mm -hmm. But but he was uh, actually I met him before that happened, and we married. But he was not uh, injured, or he came back safely from Korea. Mm -hmm. So how was your life when he was so far away? I was always busy. I was always working with newspapers. I never was. I was a housewife too, but uh, my my main thing then was working on newspapers. Loved it. Well, in those days, I don't think, I wonder if people ever gave you a hard time for working and not staying home a lot. No. My father told me that I was going to be a, a rather a new entry into the newspaper field, which was dominated by men. Uh, I was always accepted. I always enjoyed everything, and I did a lot of interviewing with some famous people, and and uh, I really, really enjoyed it. Oh, could you tell me about an interview, please? Well, I, I, I interviewed, I was told to interview Cornelius Vanderbilt, and uh, it didn't faze me at all. He was at a party or something, I just walked up to him and asked if I could have an interview, and he was very gracious, and I had a wonderful interview uh, with Cornelius Vanderbilt. And for folks Junior. who don't know, who was Cornelius Vanderbilt? Well, his father was, I believe they were Dutch, and they came over a long time ago, and I, I don't know, I think they were in the shipbuilding. Uh, industry. And uh, I had never met Vanderbilt before. I, he was a stranger when I interviewed him. Stranger to me. Mm -hmm. That was in Miami. Um, when, when you think about your family and how you all live and the things you believe, could you make up or do you know of a family motto? Like a saying that would kind of sum up. Did you say motto? Yes, ma'am. I would say honesty and kindness, particularly kindness. My father was a very kind man. Could you tell about one of the kind things he did? Well, he had a lot of friends, and uh, when I was a young age, starting about 10, uh, he started uh, taking me around to see his nice friends who were all very, very good people in society in, in Tampa. And so I would just hit, sit and, and uh, take in all the adult, nice adult conversation. He was, he was always there for me. Um, what was Tampa like during the Vietnam War? I don't think there were too many changes, although we did, we did live close to McDill Air Force Base. So uh, we knew there was a lot of activity, and I believe McDill was some sort of central agency, and uh, of course all that was secret. And um, You're talking about World War II. That's World War II. She was not in Tampa by the Vietnam War. What? By Vietnam, you, you had moved to... Uh, well, I, we were, I did move out of Tampa later. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So before the Vietnam War, you moved. Yes. <clears throat> Where'd you go? To Miami. Mm -hmm. That's right. Moved to Miami for a while, and I worked on the Miami News. So how was the news business during the Vietnam War? 
it was very active. There were a lot of important stories. Uh, and I was an editor too, so I did writing and editing for the local newspapers. Mm -hmm. So during your lifetime, have, have you been a religious person or what has religion been for you? Yes, I joined the church when I was, Presbyterian church when I was 15. So uh, I wasn't one to try to urge, I have tried to urge a few people into religion, but I have mainly just tried to do uh, worthwhile things and, and be nice to people. Is there a celebration that is a favorite for you? Well, in Tampa, it was Gasparilla. And uh, my father was in the Gasparilla crew. And uh, so I would stand in the, uh, we would stand along the highway where they were going to disembark. And uh, I was just standing there and uh, with a lot of friends lining the street in Tampa. And this car stopped, and lo and behold, it was my father. He was in the crew, and when they disembarked, he came and saw me in the crowd and took me in the car, and I was very excited. I'm going to ask you a personal question, and it's okay not to answer. Oh, all right. <clears throat> What do you think about the afterlife? I believe in the afterlife. I believe in Jesus. What will it be like? Well, it would be, I think it can be summed up in one word, heaven. And what is heaven? I'm not sure. I think it's where the Christian people are supposed to go, but I really can't say. I wonder, is there a story or a song that you used to sing or tell your daughter a lot when she was growing up? Way down upon the Swanee River, because <laughs> I always love the Swanee in White Springs. Would you give us a little, please? Do you mean uh, what we did in, in White Springs? Or? Well, sing it to us like you sang it to her. <clears throat> Way down upon the Swanee River, far, far away. That's where my heart is always turning. That's where the old folks stay. What was it like when they began the Stephen Foster Memorial? I wasn't on the ground for, floor for that living in Tampa, but uh, that's one of the first things we wanted to do. My dad and I wanted to go walking in, 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 the, uh, in the Swanee River uh, Park, and uh, it, it, it was and still is, I'm sure, a beautiful park, and I always have good memories of it. And of course, I always love the Swanee River. I've been canoeing on the Swanee River. Could you tell more about your canoe trips? Well, my daughter and I uh, were both good swimmers, so we weren't afraid to swim on, on the, or canoe on the Swanee. So uh, we rented a canoe. They, made, they had a rental canoe place uh, here in White Springs, and we rented a canoe. And, we went way up to the old bridge uh, on the Swanee, and we decided we'd go any farther, we'd get lost, so we came back around and had a wonderful canoe trip on the Swanee. We actually did go too far and had a time. Mm -hmm. Well, I've, I've just got to ask you then, Rosalind, what do you mean you went too far? Uh, well, they told us where the takeout point was. And they said, if you get to this certain bridge, you've gone too far. And we were having such a good time. And we went, oh, that's that bridge. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to go back upriver a little more than we had planned. <laughs> it worked out.
we had a white flag or so, something on the river so we know where to get out. Yeah, we just missed it on the way down. <laughs> what was your favorite thing to do when you came up here? Swim in the old spring house that has long been closed. In fact, I learned to spring, I swim there when I was five years old. Do you have college memories? Yes, I went to the University of Alabama after I transferred from FSU. So I want to ask about White Springs when you came with your daddy. Mm -hmm. How did y'all get around the town? Oh, we had a car. You did? We had an old, old Chevrolet, uh-huh. That was no problem. Were there other things to do besides go to the spring house? Well, we had relatives here. We had uh, a close relative, Dr. Dan Cone, who lived right across the street, <coughs> and they had two daughters, and we visited often. And there, we did go to a square dance once, and I love that. That was years ago when they first had the square dances here. Did you dance? Oh, yes. Love to dance. <clears throat> I'm wondering, as long as you've been in Florida, uh, do you have hurricane memories? I have memories when I was probably nine or 10. We had a terrible hurricane in Tampa, and trees were down. Uh, Everything was very dangerous, so my dad could not even go to work. Uh -huh. And I can't tell you, but I think I was, must have been about nine years old when we had this bad hurricane, I'm, I'm guessing. Did it change things on your street? No, because, uh, you know, in a big city like that, there was plenty of cleanup, a lot of cleanup crews. What was a typical day like when you had a child to raise and had to go to work? Well, my daughter was in, you know, in, in a little uh, sort of glorified uh, kindergarten, so there was no trouble with that. And she was only there half a day, so I got home in the afternoon as, after I picked her up, and she made little friends there, and I was happy. What's brought your life meaning? Okay. I'd have to say Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you worship these days? Well, I pray at night, and we have a church where I live. Is there somebody at that church that uh, really makes you feel good or is a good model for you? Well, they have a, a televised uh, instructor, uh, rather a preacher, and he's very good. Uh, so we don't have a live preacher where I live now. Uh, but I, I do. Tiffany. I mean, she's not a preacher, but. Mm -hmm. So, so I do get to see the church service. Could you tell some more about where you live now? I live in, in a, what would you call it, a Assist. assisted living, mm -hmm. and everyone's friendly there. Mm -hmm. uh, I live in Gainesville, of course, now. Mm -hmm. What do you do for fun? Well, my daughter and I have fun. We take some little side trips, some, and uh, I have friend, good friends there. And uh, Gainesville's a small town, but the university puts on a lot of interesting concerts, dramatics, and, and it's a very interesting place to live. What do you look forward to doing? 
Right now, I'm looking for a new challenge. I love to write, and I love to report. Uh, so I'm really sort of uh, trying to get into my writing again, if I can, somehow. How do you picture that happening? About 50-50. Not <laughs> too good. <laughs> but why? Well, I don't know. I just don't have the, uh, what was your question, your last question, I'm sorry. As, uh, you were looking forward to doing some writing. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering in your imagination, what does that look like? What would you do? I'd go right back to the newspapers. But I'm, I'm a little too old for that now, but uh, I love newspapers. They were a large part of my life. Why? Well, I started out at nine years old and told my family I wanted to be a, a newspaper reporter at nine. And I wrote a letter to the editor of the paper in Tampa. And, and we asked for a special comic. And they asked me, my friends, to write the editor. I did. And I uh, got a nice letter back and got, got the uh, the, the comic restored to the Tampa Tribune. <laughs> Were you ever in a really tight spot? And what happened? How'd you get out of that tight spot? Well, I was never in a really tight spot. I was hit one time in my car by another car on the side, but. The impact threw me to the driver's seat. I was by myself. I could have been badly hurt. And uh, that's something I remember. Do you have a favorite person that you could tell about? My daughter is my favorite person. She's very smart and she has a master's degree. degree and I'm a little uh, jealous because I only have a bachelor's degree. <laughs> when people meet you on this video, what kind of thing do you know that you want them to understand? How could you help them? Well, in the professional field, I, I feel like you got to enjoy your, your work. You got to go into a field that you uh, know you will enjoy. Maybe you've had a little dab of experience in. And uh, just that's going to help you. If you enjoy your work, you're probably going to do a good job. Is there anything you'd like to share with people who watch you and listen to this? Well, I'm just. So uh, honored to be in this interview, and uh, I would say to children that who are going up to to keep you know keep their lives safe and pure, and decide uh, oh hopefully by the time they get to college what what they're going to do, and not just fall into some job that they might not like. Just decide early enough so you have to take just any job. I'm just still so interested in that you worked and had a career at a time when not all women were encouraged to do that. Mm -hmm. Was it kind of, was it difficult being a woman in what might have been a man's field? No, I started in my hometown, Tampa Tribune. There was no discrimination then. Uh, I did start in the women's department, but uh, there was no discrimination whatsoever against women reporters. What was the women's department? Well, the women's department where I started, a lot of that was social events and stuff like that. But I did get to write some feature stories for the paper. Not at first. So Not at first, no, but later, later on. So that uh, I, I branched out farther, especially when I went to the Miami News. We got to do more. Women got to do more there. What did that mean, being able to do more? 
Well, we had to go out on assignments. We had to interview people. Uh, I, I interviewed Cornelius Vanderbilt. I just walked up to him at, at a Miami function, and he was most gracious. I guess that was one of, one of my most memorable interviews. What, was, what made it a favorite of yours? What, the interview or my profession or what? That interview with Cornelius, it seems like it was special. Well, because um, he was so uh, friendly, I just walked up to him and announced myself and said, may I interview you? And he said, yes. And um, I asked about his family, especially his family that came over from another country. Mm -hmm. We had some interesting talk. And uh, it was a feature story in the paper. Uh, you mentioned your daddy was from White Springs. Yes, he was, born in White Springs. How about your mom? She was from Virginia, and she was the introvert in the family, and Daddy and I were the extroverts. Uh, but she was a wonderful mother, a t uh, very nice Virginia lady. Did she try to teach you things about Virginia and how things were when she grew up? No, no, she really didn't. Uh, but my dad gave me most of, of his history, uh, which was, I guess, more important to me, the Florida history and White Springs. Were there things your daddy helped you do or understand that other young ladies might not have gotten to do? Well, I think, as I say, when I was young, he took me around to all his nice professional friends on Sundays, and uh, I sat there and, and just absorbed a lot of nice information. My dad was good about that. We, I took, you know, a lot of my experience out of that, those little visits. I could be wrong, but I see a spark of mischief when you talk about those times. <laughs> Did you, like, maybe, hear and see adult grown-up stuff that other kids, I mean, am I sniffing up right? No, but my little girlfriend and I were mischievous. Oh. Uh-huh. We, uh, we once bought a pet, pet snake, and he looked real. He was all coiled. And uh, so we decided we were going to play some jokes on the neighbors. And so Mary Ann and I, we didn't tell our parents. We went to a neighbor's house and we, she was sort of grumpy. And so we put that, that snake there and then we kept, shouted, Mrs. Jones, there's a snake in your yard. And uh, she came out with hoe. I think she knew us too well. And she took the hoe and ruined our, we were going to use that snake again, but we didn't get to. <laughs> but it was plastic. To be oh, yes. <laughs> a fake snake. I bought more mischief. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we used to, uh, at Halloween, we would run, uh, f throw sandbags on people's open front porches, which wasn't too bad, but it was, it was rather widespread in our neighborhood. There were more tricks than treats back then. <laughs> What's one of the greatest gifts you ever received? You mean just a, an ordinary gift? No. Or a, a, a physical or a spiritual gift? Any of them. A gift that you received. Well, a gift. A, a spiritual gift or a material gift? Both. Well, material gift was my first bicycle. And uh, a spiritual gift was when I joined the church at 15. Have you had any miracles? Could you tell about them if you did? Yes, I think so. I was driving, and it's not been too many years ago, um, and all of a sudden this uh, guy ran through the red light and he hit me broadside, but I was thrown into the driver's seat. I think that was a gift from God. Mm -hmm. 
that I was completely thrown out of the way of danger. Could you tell about a gift that you gave someone? What kind of gift are you talking about? Mm, one you were proud to give or happy to give? Well, not so much material gifts, but uh, I think my greatest gift after I married was my daughter, who has planned, who has a, I'm a little jealous of her because she has a master's degree and I, I don't. She's smart. She gave me a gift of putting me through college. That was really big. And I gave, you know, I sent her to college like I did. I call that a gift. Mm -hmm. How would you describe yourself today? Uh, I think I have grown out of being an introvert in my childhood days to being more an extrovert. I, I try to help people when I can. and and. Uh, I think I'm friendly. I can walk up to people and make a friend. I think I got that from my dad. Do you have something that was your favorite quality about your daddy? Kindness. Mm -hmm. What kind of kind of things did your dad do? Well, he loved people and taught me to love people. And uh, as I say, he took me around to visit with his friends. And uh, he gave me um, courage in myself and to be myself. Mm -hmm. Do you have brothers and sisters? No, I'm an only child. What do you want to do tomorrow? Tomorrow, I want to be right here in White Springs because this is where my dad grew up and I have so many happy memories of White Springs. We had a big house on US 41 and some of my family and one was a doctor, Dr. Daniel Cohn, lived across the street. So this is where I want to be. Could you tell me some more about that big house and who lived there, please? Uh, it was a two-story house. And uh, my mother and dad and I had the, when we came to visit, we had the f first floor. And my Aunt Lou, who was postmistress in White Springs, had the second floor. And uh, it had what they call now a dog run. The hall went straight from the front door to the back door. And there was a detached kitchen at that time. So it was an old fashioned house, but we loved it. Right on US 41. What were your neighbors like? We didn't have any real, we weren't jammed up with neighbors at that time. But I remember we had a very nice neighbor uh, next door, and I can't tell you what her name was. And the other side was a street that led down to the uh, Swanee River. Well, did you take that street down to the Swanee to do things? We probably did. We, most of it was swimming. We, my dad and I were good swimmers. My mother, not so much. And, uh, a large part of our time when I was growing up was uh, connected with the Swanee River, which I grew to love. There are hotels that we can't see now that were all over town. Well, what do you recall about those hotels? Well, the Telford Hotel, T-E-L-F-O-R-D, the Telford Hotel was the only hotel in town. There was a mo motel on the outside of town. and. Uh, that's where we always went for Sunday dinner because they had a wonderful cook there and, and uh, we had great times at the Telford Hotel. And uh, we understood that Theodore Roosevelt was there once. We're, we can't prove that. <laughs> when 
your daughter was little. Mm -hmm. Where did you take her to have fun? To a, oh, to have fun? Mm -hmm. She liked to go swimming. She liked to go to the movies. And uh, she had a lot of friends. And so they did things together. And it was always clean, healthy, fun. Did you go on vacations? Most of our vacations at that time went to White Springs, but we did go to North Carolina a couple of times mm -hmm. on a vacation. I loved it. So as a grown-up person and a mother, what did you do in White Springs? Mainly swim and chat with our relatives because we had relatives, quite a few relatives here. Visiting was big then. Just visiting from house to house. Are your relatives uh, any part of a cone, like Cone Bridge Road? Or yes, cone there's a Cone Bridge, Bridge Road named after my family, and, and Governor Fred Cone was my second cousin when he was governor. So how did that all happen? Well, my, my cousin Fred was a well-known lawyer in Lake, Lake City, and uh, he just ran for governor, and, and he just made it. And I went to the mansion, the governor's mansion, when I was about nine or 10. Got to visit the governor's mansion in Tallahassee. What did you do? Well, I was awed, and he just showed me around the mansion. Maybe we just talked. It was all family. Nice talk. <clears throat> Did you ever want to be governor? No. <laughs> I never aspired to go into politics. My big thing was journalism. In this life, do you have a very, very favorite song? Moon River. I like Moon River. I don't know whether I'm thinking of the Swanee or not, but just Moon River I like a lot. Would you be willing to sing some of it? Uh, Moon River, wider than the world, is such a lovely world to see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How would you like to be remembered later? As a good person, which I've tried to be. You give me your best advice to help me be a good person? Well, I think you have to like and love people. You know, uh, I think it's somewhere in the Bible about your brother. Uh, and I think liking people uh, and has helped me in my profession because I had to interview a lot of different people and um, I was never afraid to walk up to some stranger and to uh, say, may I do an interview, and I never was turned down. I just have always, I get a lot of that from my dad. He was very gregarious. If you wrote that book and it was about your life, you started a book tomorrow, what would the title be? Would it be a, an autobiography, or would it be a, a novel, or, or, or Biography. Uh-huh. About you. I guess, since it, was, it would have to be the life and times of Juliet Cohn. Thank you, Juliet Cohn. Thank you very much. Anything I didn't ask you that you wish I'd asked you? Uh, no, I'm, I'm just glad that I had a good inheritance and that I do like people, and, and I've used that in my career, and it's, it's helped me so much. I want to wish you good luck on your book. Well, I'm not writing a book. I like books, but I'm not writing a book. I like to read.
Oh, the book that I would read, that I would. Oh, I'm sorry, I got off the key. Would you repeat that, please? I'm wishing you'd write a book about Juliet Cohn. What would I, what would I write or what? Yeah, about your dad and your visits to White Springs and about being a newspaper uh, reporter. I wanted to be a newspaper reporter for nine years. And raising and a I was, daughter. Uh -huh, and I was editor. Uh, my first experience really was I was editor of the, the school newspaper in high school. And that really uh, encouraged me a lot. In fact, I believe we got a little award from Columbia University for that. And I didn't get to go. But uh, I was real proud of that. Mm -hmm. And my daughter, of course, is my proudest production. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for bringing her up Thank to you. Meet us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. This is great to hear from you. You're wow. Uh, now, where, where will this be shown or whatever? Because yeah, so I live near the University of Florida in Gainesville. Yes. So, mm -hmm. so will I be able to? Yes, ma'am. We'll send this. We'll send a copy of this to you. To me? Yes, oh, thank you so much. We'll send it to. Yeah, I'll get an email, and then we can. That will direct me to a place on the internet that I can access it on my computer, and we'll watch it. Okay. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you all so much for arranging this. I had no idea when, when we came up uh, that, that that was going to happen. And I'm so pleased and so pleased to have met all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you for all helping. that made it possible.